and let's just say in the most professional way, um, I'm disappointed. Um, we are a very immature basketball team, and that's being spoken nicely. And this is a game where you have to put your big boy shorts on and compete every single possession. Not for 10 possessions, not for 20 minutes, not for 30 minutes, every possession. Look, I don't, I don't care who we're playing against, right? But I do know that we're playing against other Division I scholarship players. So if they don't have a couple of guys missing out of their lineup, they got other guys, they got a next man up mentality. You know, that's a, that's a program that is going to fight you. And if the tables was reversed, we'll do the same. And we didn't handle um, that position of comfort very well. And, you know, it's been an ongoing thing with us, and it needs to be rectified immediately. And, you know, I'm not one to point fingers and throw players under the bus or whatever, but we all got to be better, right? And I just told them, okay, think about it this way. I'm, I'm not a mathematician, but if you're up 30, if you're a point guard, you just come down the floor and hold it for 30 seconds and kick it up in the stands, and you do that 20 times, I think you're still up. You know what I'm so why are we jumping up and throwing the ball and trying this and trying that? It, it begins to look like an AAU circuit team. And we have to be better than that, and we got to get the ball to in the right spots at the right time. And, you know, the other thing is, and we got to get used to this, is when we're up, the officiating changes. And I'm not saying it changes for better or worse. It just changes, right? It's natural that the team that's behind going to become more aggressive and so they're not going to – they're going to be more aggressive and they'll grab and hold and scratch and claw. We got to be able to play through that because the official's not giving you that call. You understand what I'm saying? And so that's what I mean by the officiating changes. And when that changes, we have to change with it. We got to get tougher with it. But right now we're not mentally tough. We're way too immature. And if we're not careful and rectify this soon, it's going to bite us. Yeah. I got to go back and look at the tape, you know, just off the top of my mind. It's just not taking care of the basketball. That's always the first thing, right? And so, um, and then we're, we're doing things like we're, we're up, we're comfortable. And now, you know, we got guys at the free throw line before they shoot talking to other players. And like, like what, what are you doing? Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, who, who are you supposed to be? Right? And so, it's frustrating and it's disappointing. And what happens is when you start acting out of character in this game, you know, the universe got a funny way of humbling you, right? And so now teams start to go on runs. You're giving up three-point plays. Bankston, I thought he was incredible. We didn't have an answer for him, which is, you know, um, you know, I told Brandon, I said, Brandon, you came to play a basketball game. He came to kick your butt, right? That was the difference in that. So, you know, we, we got to go back to the drawing board and just take care of the basketball. I'm looking at the turnovers overall. And it's 15, but our point guard had six. That's – you can't do that, right? And I, I love him to death. He, he fights for me and do so many good things, and it's my job to help make him better. But we can't just turn the basketball over unforced and just allow them to go down. We call them pick sixes and score at the other end. Without, it's, it's just – it's hurtful. I'm, I'm embarrassed, right? And so got to do a better job of, of you know, Going back to the board and watching film, I don't know because you guys know like the, the caliber of point guards we've had. So I've been exposed. Poopy Chapman was just in our locker room and I was like, boy, right? So you already know. But, you know, we accept everyone for who they are and we accept their strengths and deficiencies. And it's our job as coaches to turn their deficiencies into strengths and we will. Yeah, I'm a no. I'm a no excuse guy. Um, it's, they never when they leave here and it's time to go to the party. They ain't tired then. When they leave here and the girls say, "Oh, you so cute, come up here and take me out." They 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 ain't tired then. You know what I'm saying so. They they only tired when it don't go their way. So I'm a no excuse guy. You know these are young men. They in highly conditioned. They may have been fatigued or whatever, but you know in those moments we got to put teams away. Period. And it's not just – it's been an ongoing thing. Like, we – if you look at our season, I think we've probably lost, not even in conference, but we, we've just given away games down the stretch, right? And so, eventually, like, you're, you're 
on the tail end of February, you're heading into March, you got to be able to close. We're playing great basketball for 35 minutes or 30 minutes, but that's not good enough. We'll find out, man. Um, we discussed some things, so we definitely probably, I think it's time, you know, going down the stretch to kind of tinker the lineup a little bit um, and and go with other guys who we think we can trust with the basketball a little bit more in those situations um, because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. So, you know, one of my things is I believe in people and sometimes I believe in them too much, right? So we just got to figure it out. And it's not on one person. It's it's on everyone as a whole. Um, but it's our job to go back and tinker the lineup and, you know, try to make the necessary changes and adjustments to give us a better chance to close out basketball games. And with the, looking at the MEAC standings, um, what do you make of what you guys could be if you guys win on against South Carolina State or you guys finish? I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I don't even know. I don't know what place we. They'll tell you. I don't. I don't even know. I don't even know when we play South Carolina State. I just all I know is we got practice tomorrow at at three o'clock. I'm just a one day at a time dude. I've never read an article. I've never watched an interview. I've never. If, if I retweet something, I ain't read it. Right. It's just. I'm just a guy to just keep my head down and go tunnel vision of it. So I don't look at the standards. I don't even know where we are in the, in the standards, to be honest with you. I don't know who got to beat who to help us. Be, like, it's too much for me. I just try to focus and keep the main thing the main thing because it's important for us to control our controllables. And right now our controllables is how do we finish basketball games and continue to play at a high level. We're playing well, right, and I'm I'm proud of them for that. But – you know, that has to be rectified, man. Re like, really, that has to be rectified because I've never had a team go through this learning curve and growing pains and not be able to finish at the end of games the way I would like for them to. You beat Norfolk. They're, they're currently only one um, in overtime. How, how is the game and how is there a bright spot that you can look at tonight? Yeah, like we won, right? So with all that said, I'm, you know, don't get it twisted. I'm happy we won. I take it how we take it. But, um I wish my cholesterol and blood pressure wasn't as high in the process of it, you know, so personally and physically it got to be a better way. But, you know, this is what I signed up for. And all, all coaches across America is going through this, man. So, you know, we won. And so it's, it's the, to their credit, they pushed us into overtime. We fought in overtime and made significant plays at significant times. And, you know, listen, man, I've been on both ends of it. Y'all know me as a player and as a coach. Um, I, I really don't have as much control. They make me look a lot better than I am. Uh, so, you know, in those situations, certain players, significant players got to make significant plays at significant times. And Justin Wright stepped up and elevated his play on the offensive and defensive end. I don't know what happened with the elbow. I got to go back and look at the tape on that. But, you know, again, that's the, that's the mental discipline we talk about all the time, right? Like, you know, you get a rebound and now I don't know what happened. You got the inbounds and he grabbed you, you elbowed him, they call it tech. Like, that's the immaturity. We have to grow up, right, period. We got to grow up and concentrate on one possession at a time and play that possession as perfectly as possible. For the wins today, Fred, just after you guys were up so many points and then for them to come back with a win in overtime, just where do you think the game kind of took a turning point where they started to? Uh, I feel like we uh, took them for granted being up that much. Uh, we kind of relaxed and we was trying to do stuff. We wasn't, we wasn't sticking to the script. And we took a couple plays off and eventually started changing the floor of the game. You guys had 30 plus bench points. You came away with almost more than half of them. Just what were you seeing there out on the court? And what was it like just to have your number called and be right there ready to respond? Oh, uh, it was just preparation. I feel like all week uh, I was preparing for this game. Just off the way they play, I feel like I'm going to have different opportunities. I'm going to have multiple opportunities to look for my shot. Uh, just because off the last time we played them, we missed so many open shots. So to come here today, playing at home, last home game, uh, just was locked in. So I say. You mentioned it being the last home game. You guys knocked off the number one team in the MEAC. What are your feelings after the game? Uh, honestly, man, I don't like. We don't like to win. Honestly, like we felt like we should have did. We should have won by a lot more. Uh, Cause going in, we know that going into next week, every game matters now. So we can't have that type of slip up down in Norfolk. We need, we need to, once we up, put our foot on people's neck and keep it going. And what, 
what little things do you think you, you guys need to tweak, you know, to make sure you guys are fine tuned by the time the X come Uh, I would say late game execution. Uh, we got to do better second half. Our first half, I feel like we come out pretty good, but we have a stretch almost every game where we got to find a way to keep doing what we were doing before and stick to the script, stick to the plan. Don't try to go out the way. Don't try to do yours. Don't try to go overboard. Just stick to what we do, and I feel like we're we going to be all, all right. Uh, what was the feeling late game uh, for you personally, and what energy were the guys giving off? Uh man, just the crowd with the crowd in, it just felt like you you could feel the like the, I don't know what, I, what the word I'm looking for, but you could just feel how like intense it was, and you live for moments like that, you pray for moments like that, man. You've been playing your whole life for moments like this, so you just gotta embrace it and just do what you've been working on, stay prepared, and just stick to the script. Basketball is really big up there. There's something on the inside of yours that pull out to overcome anything that you're going through in life, but also in basketball. How did you apply? Where you come from your foundation to bring out the for yourself today at the point you Growing up in Chicago, man, it's, it's tough already. So, you know, we all just use what we can and find a way out. And basketball, me and my, my parents uh, instilled that in me early early age. And from then, I knew I was going to use this to take me on my journey, and I'm going to just keep riding out till it can't no more. How did you apply that tonight in tonight's game? Uh, just being tough. Tough situations. You're going to be in tough situations your whole life. It's up to you what you're going to do. You know, you can't fold because some, somebody hit you back. If you're going to apply the first hit, you got to be able to take it. And what you're going to do when they do that. So that's how I look at it, you know, just being tough, staying tough. Don't fold when things get hard because that determines how much of a man you are for real when things are not going your way. So I would say me being from the city, that just give me that toughness I try to bring every night to help my team. Tonight with an electrified win, just let us know, you know, you had the game winning still. See, all, saw all versus the motion come out. Just what, just what emotion came out when that when you got that steal to the deal? Really, just my passion for the game. Uh, more so, like a sigh of relief because we wasn't even supposed to be in that position. Up uh, thirty, the game shouldn't have came down to that. I'm just glad we got the win. And like you said, you alluded to you guys being up 27, 30 points, and then in winning in overtime. Was there just was there a time in the game where you just felt it turning toward the other way, or was there something you guys could have done? Um, it was more so around probably like the 12, uh, 13 minute mark. Uh, so we made subs and stuff. Uh, we got back in the game and we just went on the run for like four or five minutes. We didn't get no stop. And we big on defense. Uh, we know more than me in defense. But for like four to five minutes, we didn't get no stop and we kept turning the ball over. Um, mentioned last interview, uh, over 30 minutes again tonight, you know, you're just out there giving it your all. What continues to be the fuel for you um, down the stretch? I uh, really wanted to win a MEAC championship. Um, late game, uh, when it came in, Billy Bacon were getting into some serious foul trouble. What was going through your mind? Um, and what was the vibe like off the, the sideline or off the bench? Um, my mindset when uh, Cam and BNB was getting in foul trouble was that I'm going to just have to board more. I'm um, had to be more physical. I'm um, had to like play defense harder on the perimeter so the ball don't even go into the post. Uh, just things like that. Uh, the crowd gave me good energy. The bench that was behind me the whole game. So I love my team. With, with the MEACs coming up, um, you guys just defeated the number one team. Just where do you guys, I see you guys are standing with the three, possibly. You're at four right now. Three is the highest you can get. What is your confidence level heading into the MEAC? And just where do you guys think you stand actually compared to the rest of the uh, I feel like we're the best team in the MEAC. Uh, we just had a couple slip-ups beginning uh, conference play. Um, but now I think we find our strides. We just got to keep getting better and keep trusting it, keep trusting our coach. And your, your coach touched on uh, one of the instances toward the end of the game where he said, you know, you guys just have to work on your maturity. Are, are, just, are there some things, you know, as you being a leader, are there some things that you saw at the end of the game where you said, okay, maybe that, that's on me we could get better? Uh, more so at the end when they tried to give me a technical foul when they did. Uh, I could have did better, uh, even though bro was pulling on my jersey. I didn't have to throw extra force to get him off. I guess that's maturity, like you always talk about. Uh, a lot of our turnovers at the end of the game, that's maturity because we practice on that every day. So, you know, it's just we got to become men at the end of the day instead of being children. All right, so your focus was crucial for the win at the end. Well, I know for extended stretches, but what was the difference between the Spartans are hungry and they want it? And before overtime, both teams responded with back to back jump shots. And the crowd rolled through all throughout the whole game, the highs and lows. And even at the very end, three more points were scored. 
and to the advantage of you all, you know, God was called, the final score was what it was, you all came out of the win. And during that game, your attitude and leadership on the court show that you're going to fight and not leave with the loss. What did you tell yourself and where did you pull from in order to lock in and focus to get your team to win? Uh, really my heart, uh, I love basketball. Uh, this is my passion, this is what I want to do in life. Uh, when you know you got teammates, seniors, and I just don't want them to go out sad, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're my brothers. I want to send them out with a ring. I want us to be a happy family, keep this as a memory for the school and for ourselves. And lastly, Jay, right, it seems like when the, when the game is on the line, the team knows that they're going to trust in you. It seems like the whole gym knows where you're going to go, and yet you still get to your spot. Just how much of that is confidence? How much of that is training? And how much of that is just the killer mindset that you just have? Uh, really? Um, uh, I know I probably said this before, but my favorite player, Kobe. So, like, I knew Kobe wouldn't fall in no time like that, so why should I? You know, that's just a mentality I've been instilling in myself, uh, just my passion for the game. Speaking of Kobe, there was a time when he was on his way to a championship and people were celebrating around him. He said the job isn't done. Mm -hmm. So now you have other games you have to do. So with the job not being done, not being done now, what's your mindset mentality in preparing for the next games that you have to uh, really one game at a time. Uh, we got beat South Carolina State Thursday, and then we focus on the first round of the MEAC tournament. It's just one game at a time. You can't think ahead.